This great beast has been revered throughout history. Today, the elephant is all too often regarded only as meat and ivory. But in reality, it plays a far more significant role in the well-being of its environment. 25 years ago, it appeared that the habitats in some of Africa's national parks were being destroyed by too many elephants. Two solutions to the problem were put forward. Either the elephants had to be left to die naturally, or they had to be culled by artificial means. In the late 1950s, a successful anti-poaching campaign in which all government departments cooperated virtually stopped the killing. Ironically, by the end of the decade, it was thought there were too many elephants. This could only be seen by the impact of their feeding on the bushland. The elephants themselves remained mostly hidden. The idea of culling elephants in order to alleviate the strain on the vegetation was brought up for the first time. This was thought to be the only solution. The first aerial count revealed not 5,000, but a staggering 15,000 elephants. And even this figure was later proved to be too low. Other African parks had introduced culling to counteract their overpopulation problems. David Sheldrick, Savo's warden, came under pressure to follow suit. Time and time again, scientists warned him that once the elephants had destroyed the trees, Savo would become a desert. However, those who lived in Savo noticed changes taking place which told a different story. Under the fallen trees, perennial grasses were beginning to grow. These deep-rooted permanent grasses, which David had been told could not survive here, convinced him that not enough was known about long-term vegetation cycles. In 1971, good rain still did not fall. It was frightening not knowing when the drought would end and what the consequences would be. We now accept that elephants have many of the characteristics of man. Their lifespan is similar. They have a sense of family, lifelong loyalties, and a sense of death. There's no doubt the unique bond of kinship between these cows enabled them to draw strength from each other, just like we do in times of despair. No matter how awful death from malnutrition must be, culling as an alternative is in reality no less horrifying to witness and is even more distressing for the elephants. A family is selected at random and then herded towards a road. The helicopter then keeps it there while ground crews get into position. These elephants already know what is going to happen. They can hear extremely low frequencies, so not only are they able to detect the daily flights, but they can also hear the distress calls of other families being wiped out from as far away as 10 kilometers. The helicopter swoops in and a dart is fired at an elephant below. Then it veers off to counteract any attempts to escape. As a tourist visiting a national park, how would you feel about watching a herd of elephants today and wondering if tomorrow they'd be reduced to tins of meat? From the early estimates of the 1950s, elephant numbers steadily rose. Then, in 1970, a natural decline started with the first drought victims. In addition, a huge increase in poaching in the following years caused the elephant population to crash. The gradual change between elephant numbers and woody vegetation was upset. As a result, the thick bushland has quickly grown back over large areas of the park. It will be up to Kenyans to decide if the recurring cycle of bushland and grassland in the Savo ecosystem will be allowed to continue its natural course. In the 44 years since the park was formed, elephants haven't destroyed the vegetation. For sure they have changed it, but that is the natural way of things in Savo. Many people believe the elephants would turn Savo into a desert. The desert is outside the park where man's preoccupation with domestic animals devastates the land to the detriment of all life.